Well, good afternoon. It's now gone uh, midday in Perth, uh, in Perth time. So we're going to commence this uh, webinar. It's called Protecting Business Information. And it's all about protecting your organisation from a range of events that could impact your ability to service your customers, to protect your client and customer information, and to ensure that you've got robust policies and procedures in place to ensure proper record keeping and document control. My name's David Ashton and I'm Principal Consultant with uh, Corporate Supremacy, a business advisor with the business station since 2014. Now you can see there are a range of uh, services that I provide. So if I can be of assistance to you in business related matters, please uh, give me a call. Uh, I've been a business advisor since 2014. Uh, business Station uh, provides a range of services to SMEs, uh, advice, guidance, uh, business incubators at Cosmos, um, East Perth and Joondala and also um, provide services across the WA Northern Territory in Queensland. The ASBAS program provides assistance to small and medium businesses at a low and no cost basis, um, websites, you know, marketing, social media and the like. And, and I generally fall within general business advice and online security and data privacy. So what we're going to go through today is um, looking at information security management or record keeping document control, looking at it from a management perspective. You've got you know, the software and the IT uh, perspective, you know, what type of software you should install and, and that type of thing. You've got the legal aspect of it all, but this is looking at you as a business owner or a manager. How can you make sure these things actually are in place in the organisation and that they're actually occurring and you've got internal controls in place to ensure adequate protection of your business and client information. So, and that's why I focus on, you know, protect and grow your business because on the one hand, you're trying to protect your business information and your corporate knowledge. On the other hand, you're trying to grow your business. And I do see some synergies in there, particularly in relation to other areas that I advise on in relation to tenders and business greens demonstrating your organisational capacity um, to your prospective clients. And that is how you run your business. And there's an increasing focus on, um, you know, in government and, and industry on your capacity as a business to manage and protect information, whether it be your own corporate information uh, or whether it be the client information that you have at hand. So you must be able to demonstrate your capacity to protect personal and corporate data or, or business data, your, your own business information. I mean, you wouldn't want your competitors getting access to your corporate information. You wouldn't want, um, you know, a, a leaking of personal details about your clients. So, so that's the whole idea of today is to look at some practical measures that you can put in place to outline, uh, to protect your information and, and grow your business at the same time. We'll also be touching on some uh, software type issues and uh, legal issues, but by and large, it's looking at it from a management perspective. So, and you know, the government, the WA government tenders, for example, the, the standard templates have provision in there for cyber liability insurance. Um, so there is potential for these to have some insurance implications in, in the future. Um, you know, protecting your information will allow you to monitor your performance. You know, if you've got good information at hand um, in an accessible format, um, it, it's good for make, helping you monitor your performance and adjusting business processes accordingly, uh, manage your risks and opportunities as a business, fulfill your compliance obligations, which are you know, ever increasing for business owners. And as I said, assist with business development because if you can demonstrate robust policies and procedures around business management, information security, 
uh, safety, quality, environment, uh, business continuity and the like, then this will convince a prospective client that you're a robust, safe pair of hands to do business with. So we're now going to look at uh, some of the issues that you need to be across. And, and I'm, the first one is fraud and corruption control in your business. You're probably thinking of fraud, corruption in terms of government, big business, but it could quite easily happen in smaller businesses. And remembering that, you know, whilst you may be a small business at this point in time, you know, but where are you going to be in, you know, three, five, ten years' time? You're going to be employing staff. You're going to, you know, perhaps step back from day to day type aspect as you grow your business, you become focused in, in certain areas, not everything. So you're going to be putting people in control of particular functions of your business. So as I said, it's, it's about you know, understanding the, the issues now so you can, in terms of growing your business, you can adopt these policies and procedures as you go along. So, so what is fraud and you know, misappropriation of assets? So that's someone you know, using the company vehicle for private use when they're not supposed to. Um, manipulating financial reporting, so, you know, you're not providing correct information to, um, you know, regulatory bodies. Um, and an abuse of position for personal gain. So, um, you know, procurement, uh, someone hiding off 10% of your income to their bank, personal bank account, uh, that, that type of thing. Or, um, using their position for an unjust benefit to themselves at the uh, expense of, of your business. So fraud itself, you know, uh, defined as the intentional act by one or more individuals involving the use of deception to obtain an unjust or illegal advantage um, can potentially result in a, a loss, financial loss to any person or or your business. So it's that thing around use of deception to obtain an unjust or illegal advantage. So they're using your business, your resources, your money to enrich themselves and not benefit the business and its shareholders. So types of fraud, you know, misappropriation of funds, uh, causing a loss of liability um, in terms of reporting of money or financial records, profit from insider knowledge, accepting or seeking anything of value from a third party providing goods or services. So yeah, that's your, your procurement process. Offering anything of value to third parties, um, false invoicing for goods or services never rendered. So there's some examples of fraud that may or may not occur in, in your business. So corruption, on the other hand, is dishonest honest activity in which personnel act contrary to the interests of the organisation and abuse their position of trust. So, you know, misrepresenting themselves to other parties for an advantage of themselves and not for the benefit of the business. So you need to make sure that all your staff, everything you do is to the benefit of the business and shareholders, not people using their position within your business to enrich themselves at the expense of your business. So examples of corruption, payments of secret commissions, receipt of bribes and gratuities, release of confidential information, and that, that's, you know, particularly, um, you know, that gets down to that information security processes that will put in place. So you don't want corporate knowledge of your business leasing out to your competitors or other organisations that may seek to have an impact on your organisation. So manipulation of a tendering process to achieve a desired outcome. So that's you know, favouring one supplier over another and a conflict of interest involving personnel acting in their own self-interest rather than the interests of your business. So again, that's what it's all about. As I said, it's about people not acting in the best interests of your business and it's shareholders that's acting in their own interests and using your resources to do so. So, so how do we prevent that? Well, it, it gets down to having you know, your watertight you know, contracts of employment, policies and procedures, um, you know, identifying risks 
where there are some risks of fraud and, and dealing with that, putting in place risk mitigation strategies, you know, undertaking due diligence into your suppliers and your clients and your, your prospective employees, you know, communicating and training the requirements, uh, or, or training your, your existing employees and communicating the requirements, and putting in place measures to monitor and review the effectiveness of uh, you know your policies and procedures, and then of course if you find any evidence of wrongdoing, then you take um, appropriate action to deal with it. And there's actually an Australian standard called AS, well, it's an AS 8000 suite um, proposes an approach to controlling fraud and corruption through a process of establishing objectives, values, um, yeah, all the things that we want to focus on risk treatment, plan, monitoring, and training training and the like. So step, but importantly establishing a procedure for reporting fraud and corruption. So looking at this will so that employees in your business um, are comfortable to be able to um, report incidents of fraud and corruption and and having them uh, dealt with without impacting the person that's been honest enough to report it. So and then from your point of view conducting internal audits of your finances. So you know, that regular internal audit, external audits on the finances to make sure that everything's above board, things are accounted for and the like. You know, record keeping, document control, but good records around your assets, use of assets and like. So it's a combination of policies and procedures, but also good record keeping. So yeah, obviously the, the benefits of mitigating this, this sort of thing, you know, um, timely and mitigation is about you know, policies, procedures, internal reviews and the like, and, and good oversight of the organisation. So, you know, timely deception and detection of fraud and corruption, recovery of all property that's dishonestly appropriated, uh, suppression uh, by other businesses, personnel against yours and satisfying customers' clients and their personal and business reputation and, and their information is, is secure as well. So again, depending on your size of the business, this will carry more weight, but I think it's important to put in place, even if you're just doing you know, two or three person or one, even one person operation, just put in place measures to make sure that you know, in, the information and resources that you have are adequately protected. So we look at privacy. So privacy is, as it says, privacy of personal and, and corporate information. So it is governed by the Privacy Act in Australia. Um, so handling personal information. So it's you know, how you collect information, how you store it, why do you collect it, how do you use it, how do you dispose of it, and how you allow other people and organisations to have access to it. So that's essentially what the privacy legislation and the principles outline. So businesses um, greater than three million must have a privacy policy. Then as I said, the way they collect, store, dispose, provide access to use and disclose personal information. And then you're exempt for under three million, but it is, a, uh, you are encouraged to develop a policy and you know, particularly if you're dealing with personal information and client information, it's, it's particularly important to have strategies around that because you know, even the best, uh, you know, the smallest business can have their information hacked. So I'd certainly encourage some policies and procedures around uh, protecting personal information. And that, you know, that uh, answers questions that you might get in the tender or a business grant around your organisational capacity. So, you know, maintain strong security of, you know, physical and, and electronic security of information. Uh, develop a privacy plan or procedure, identify the types of information that you collect, any applicable laws or regulation, regulations that pertain to that. Gather and examine your internal 
policy to determine how information is collected and processed is used, stored, accessed and disposed. So I think really rather than go through the, the dot points, I think the key message here is to identify the types of records and documents that you keep in your business. Identify what legislation applies to it. Identify how it is used in your business. How it is collected and why it's collected. Identify how you're storing it and how you're using it and how you intend to dispose of it at its end of useful life. And then put in place some procedures. That, you know, do a gap analysis, make sure that it's watertight in terms of those things, but then put in some place some procedures to make sure that that's maintained. So yeah, consider your, your privacy of your customer information, your legal compliance, data protection, um, yeah, collection, processing, storage and, and destruction, uh, the data lifestyle, uh, life cycle. So yeah, implement controls and systems allow for early detection. So what sort of monitoring that you're gonna put in place as a business owner? and then develop your policies and procedures, involve your, your employees in the development of that and incorporate those policies and procedures into future contracts of employment. So thereby you can protect your business and that by evidence of you know, staff not complying with those policies and procedures. So you know, your procedures should also look at you know, incidents where there is misuse or breaches of the policies and procedures. And have in place um, you know, your personnel commencement and exit procedures to protect against information and misappropriation upon termination. And so you know, what are the processes you put in place when the new staff come on board to ensure adequate protection of information? And then when they're uh, leaving, your employment, uh, what do you do before they they finish up? You know, do you collect information, cancel passwords, um, cancel access to your record keeping system, cancel access to your computer system and, and that type of thing. And importantly, you know, once you've got these policies and procedures in place is conduct regular audits to make sure that they're actually being uh, fulfilled, they're actually being implemented correctly and there is that adequate control in place of personal and business and client information. Uh, this website here is the Office of Australian Information Commissioner. There's a lot of advice and guidance and tools on that website that you can access to assist you put in place an exam, uh, uh, put in place some um, privacy policies and procedures. Likewise, um, the AS8000 Good Governance Principles, uh, they are, that's an Australian standard of outlines and policies and procedures that you can put in place to protect um, business information, uh, information security management uh, system standard, uh, which we'll touch on a bit later on, um, that has some examples of policies and procedures that you can put in place. And obviously the Privacy Act regulates the handling of personal information. So, you know, being across the, the details of that as it relates to your business or at, at the very least knowing where you can get advice and guidance on that. And as I said, that website that I put up on the screen earlier will assist in that process. Um, the EU General Data Protection Regulation, which came out a couple of years ago, that's mainly targeting businesses that deal with um, organisations in, in the European community. Um, they have got, that's similar to our Privacy Act. State and local and federal governments have things called Records Act, uh, the State Records Act for state records and federal government has a similar act and Freedom of Information Act. They, they're all things that govern record keeping, information management, and access to information. So if you've got a contract uh, or providing services to a state or federal government agency or a local government, 
then there will be some requirements around your record keeping, your information management, document control uh, that you need to be across. And it may form part of your contract to maintain proper records in a form that the agency requires you to do so. So just be mindful of those sort of things. And that's just some information about uh, the next slide is uh, just some information about the general data protection regulation in Europe. So if you do business in Europe, check that uh, organisation out and um, seek some further information on what you need to, to comply. So the next uh, thing we're going to talk about is um, business continuity as another form of information management security. Now, when we talk about business continuity, it, it has various extremes, but it's identifying threats to your organisation that would impact business operation. Now, a threat could be, um, well, a threat to me at the moment could be, you know, in the middle of a webinar, the, uh, the internet going there. You know, I lose all access to internet and... Uh, I can't deliver the webinar. So business continuity is about identifying those threats that will impact your operations as a business and then putting in place mechanisms to mitigate those risks to ensure that you continue you can continue to provide um, your services if those uh, risks eventuate. So I'm using a, a, a broadband network. Uh, through through a cable um, and sorry through Wi-Fi. If the internet went down, then perhaps I could uh, connect into my mobile phone hotspot to, to continue the webinar. So that yeah, you know, I've identified the risk. Um, I've identified the impact. So the risk is the internet goes down. I can't continue with the webinar in its current form. So the the strategy that I'll put in place to deal with it is quickly connect up to my mobile phone hotspot and hopefully that'll work and uh, and, and go from there and, and use that. So that, that's the sort of thing that we're talking about is this uh, continuity. So step one, well, I'll, I'll get to it, but it's about um, identifying risks to your operations and putting in place mechanisms to achieve it. So, you know, prevent or diminish and avoid disruption, minimise risk and vulnerability, sorry about that, and ensure a timely resumption of operations. And here's um, there's this, this website will take you to a template that you can download to put in place a business continuity plan. So the um, planning process is understanding risks and impacts. Um, so, so that scenario that I just went through, um, develop the, the business continuity strategy. And, and put in place the plans, organise teams if you've got multiple people involved, implement the plan, test it and review and maintain it. So um, it's, it's, it's a risk management process. You identify things that are going to impact your operations. You determine the likelihood of them happening, the consequences of it, and then you put in place the risk treatment of that. And then you test it to make sure that those risk treatments are going to work. And then once you're satisfied that the plan is, is rock solid, then you implement it. And then during as part of your management process, you review and maintain your plan. So yeah, the plan outlines the risks an organization faces and then should incorporate things like an identification and prioritization of business processes, so you know, particularly the critical ones, um, identify and reduce risks, limit their consequences, ensure speedy resumption of essential operations. So again, identify the critical business functions that are going to be impacted, identify the risks that they're exposed to, and then put in place um, mitigation strategies to deal with that. So looking at on what basis would you activate a plan, looking at emergency procedures, and then what are your fallback procedures? So, you know, move essential activities of support service to alternative locations, 
being processed is back in operation in a quiet time scale. So, um, yeah, so it's also having backup plans in place. So I just identified a backup plan earlier on. It could be, you know, you, you're in an office complex and it's, it's flooded out. Um, you know, your business continuity might be, you know, return your operations to home. I mean, COVID's a good example of business disruption. I mean, so most of anyone, you know, look at what happened to your business as a result of COVID-19 COVID and what did you do, do to deal with it? So, you know, a lot of businesses moved back home. We increased the use of, you know, electronic communication through Zoom and, and other mechanisms. People work from home. Um, a whole range of, you know, things changed and plans were implemented to ensure business continuity, that you were still able to get services, you know, take away restaurants, you know, move from in dining to takeaway. So there was an element of business continuity. Yeah, and I, I imagine most of these uh, measures that were put in place were a reaction rate. Um, but the whole idea of a business continuity plan is to identify, is to be proactive so that you're not caught on the hop like, like many businesses were with COVID-19, that you identify potential uh, risks to your day-to-day -day operations and then you put in place measures to ensure that no matter what the circumstance, you can continue operations. And, and I guess, you know, in, in, in the context of writing a tender or a, a business grant, uh, and tender is a good example because I deal a lot with those is that, you know, if you're delivering a service to your client, you need to demonstrate to the, the buyer, the, the government agency, that no matter what the circumstances, you're still going to be able to deliver your service. So a good example is um, a, a cleaning, you know, or say local government has a cleaning contract. Um, they need cleaning done, you know, daily. They need special cleaners, no matter what the circuit, you know, you might be on site um, and you're doing um, strip and seal of floors, so the polishes and all that, and you're in the middle of that and the polisher breaks down. What is your business continuity? Does that mean that you're packing in for the day or, or you've got to wait to get that machine fixed until um, to start up again? Or do you have a backup machine in place so that could come on site immediately and continue operating? So that's your you know, that's your backup plan, but then you've got to put in place preventative measures. So the things that you should be doing are regularly maintaining your plant equipment so they don't break down at inconvenient times. So there's proactive and reactive measures that you can put in place as part of your business plan. But it's all about satisfying your um, your client that no matter what the circumstances, you're still able to deliver your goods and services to them. So resumption procedures, maintenance schedule to test the plan, awareness and education. So very important to bring your, your staff on board with it all. Um, uh, and outline in the plan roles and responsibilities of key personnel who are going to be responsible for implementing it. So one of the things, so that's business continuity. So essentially it's about identifying risk to your operations, your day-to-day -day operations, and putting in place measures, both preventative and reactive, to ensure that um, no matter what the circumstances, you can continue to deliver your goods and services to your client. So one thing, and this is more of a, 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 tech, a, a tech issue that the government, the federal government, has, in place for small and medium businesses is, is what they call the essential aid, which are essentially mitigation strategies to assist business protect their systems against a range of cyber security threats. So the um, strategies to prevent malware, um, limit and ex the extent of cyber security and strategies to recover data and system availability. So, these are just some tools that you can um, implement. So application whitelisting, which is allowing some identified entities access to your to your um, you know your computer system and your information. So you need to identify who in your organisation and who outside your organisation 
can have access to what not everyone in your business needs to have access to everything about your business. So patch application, so changes to the computer programming or supporting data design to update, fix or improve it. So you know, make sure that you use the latest version of these applications. So if you're using Microsoft, so you know the macro settings, um, you know block macro macros from the internet only allow vetted macros, um, you know, for trusted locations or when there's um, digitally signed and trusted certifications. So again, managing your Microsoft and access to various uh, systems through that. So application hard, hardening, so you know, removing all, all software, non-essential software and programs from your computer. So you know, websites, um, you know, blocking uh, flash content or web advertisements, you know, Java, um, you know, flash content. So, so anything that you don't need to run your day-to-day -day computer system, you should remove from um, the system. That's essentially what that is saying. And restrict administrative privileges. So this is about um, who in your organisation ha should have access to what. I mean, not everyone needs to have access to everything. So, um, you know, when, when you're bringing on an employee, determine what information they need to have access to, what files they need to have access whether they be electronic or paper copies of a filing cabinet. Um, so really get a good idea as to what is needed and who needs to have access to it. And the patch uh, operating system. So again, use the latest operating system versions and don't use unsupported versions. So it's again, it's a type of software and, and data that you're prepared to uh, install in your computer system. Multi-factor authorization, uh, authentication. Well, that's essentially using two forms of, of password, really. So, you know, you know, passwords with six or more characters and having, um, you know, a combination of symbols and capital letters and lowercase. Um, it could be a combination of password and a security uh, key, you know, a bit like banks when you go through business banking, they, you've got a security key that you've got to um, access. And it could be, um, you know, in that case, you might have one person with approval to upload the banking requirements, but they can't approve it. So then it's going to go to another person for approval, it's, it's that type of thing. But then also looking at, you know, access to your premises, having a swipe card instead of keys and, and, and the like. So. And then the other one, the, the last one is daily backups. So, um, you know, regularly back up your information in a separate drive um, and storing that in a location, um, you know, either on the cloud, obviously that's the main, where it's done now, but you know, if you're using portable devices such as you know portable hard drives and that, make sure they're stored in um, a, a secure location from theft, but fire and, and the like. So. so that's the um, essential aid that the federal government. I'll give you some websites later where you can access further information about those. So now we're going to look at you know, the management of all this. So we've identified all our risks and, um, you know, we've identified some, you know, legislation that we've got to comply with and, and you know, we've, you know, we've, we've had a look at the, the essential aid and, you know, what are some of the mechanisms that we can take from that to protect our information. This next section is focusing on information security management system ISO 27001, it's an international standard designed to, um, to 
for organisations, you know, policies and procedures involved in an organisation's information security risk management process. Um, it's, it's a management system, a bit like quality and safety and environment, um, helping you manage your risk in the organisation and managing your security of information. So it's around policies, procedures, working structures and the like. So it requires an organisation in setting up a management system. And, and I'm talking about, you know, it, it's all about scale, depending on the size of your business. I mean, it could be just a couple of simple flow charts um, outlining, you know, what happens in a certain circumstance. So just, you know, some a, a one page dot points of what you're going to do when a new staff member comes on board in relation to accessing corporate information or, or when they leave and what sort of controls you're going to put in place. So we're not talking necessarily voluminous documents. It really depends on the size of your organisation. So you, yeah, you're not in setting up these sort of policies and procedures, you know, examine your security risks, develop your policies and procedures and adopt an overarching management process to ensure that controls can continue to meet the organisation's needs. So, as we talked about, identify risks, develop policies and procedures to mitigate those risks and ensure that there's ongoing monitoring and review of the implementation of those policies and procedures. So the complexity of this system would depend size, location, culture, legal environment, so your organisation context. The scope of the system will depend on the level of application, which areas of the organisation it's going to uh, be uh, implemented through you know the nature of the business what sort of industry you're in obviously depending on the type of industry it's going to it's going to influence the extent to which you need to protect information and obviously the compliance obligations that your business need to to meet that will also have a uh, implication and uh, the other one i'd add to there is the business development component if you're getting questions in tender documents around your capacity to manage um, client and government information, then you need to demonstrate that you've got some policies and procedures and a management approach to do actually doing that, because then you're going to be assessed on that. So putting in place a policy, simple one-page statement needs to be appropriate to your organisation provide a framework for setting the um, quality objectives around that. It must include a commitment to satisfy the applicable requirements, which I will touch on later, and commitment to continuous improvement. You have to document it, communicate it, and make it available. So generally you see these things on websites or on the front entry of uh, businesses. So you need to set some objectives. So the objectives need to be consistent with policy. So your objectives could be things like, um, you know, uh, well, the, the objective is not to have any data released that's unauthorised. Um, so you need to set measurable objectives around that, applicable to the organisation requirements. You need to monitor it, communicate and update it, update the information. So procedures, so control and maintain procedures needed to meet the requirements, implement plans, perform risk assessments and develop it via security risk treatment plan. So again, procedures around identify a risk, identify the, cons the causes of that risk, the consequences of it, the likelihood of it, of it happening, and then the procedure is how you're going to deal with it. How are you going to manage it to make sure it doesn't happen? So some of the documentation you need around having an information security management system. So outline the scope of it, the policy. So the scope is the, how far reaching it is into your organisation. Uh, the policies and objectives, the risk assessment and treatment plans and methodologies, the statement of applicability, which I'll talk about later, and the risk treatment plan. You also need an assessment of your risks, definition of security roles and responsibilities. So who in your organisation is going to be responsible for aspects of information management and security? 
need to have an inventory of your assets and particularly your information assets and what records you have and documents that you have in using the organisation. Procedures around the acceptable use of assets, so in what circumstances can be they being used, who has access to them, and the like, and that's your access control policy. Who, so who in the organisation? Well, first of all, what, um, what, act, what information that you have, and then what um, information uh, you need to protect. And in terms of the risk treatment, select the appropriate treatment options. So, you know, what's the best way to manage that risk and put in place measures to mitigate the effects of that. Determine any controls, so internal and otherwise. The statement of applicability, again, which I'll mention in the next slide. Um, formulate the risk treatment plan, obtain approvals and retain the documented information about the process. So you need to have these plans in place. They're good from a business development point of view because your clients are going to be asking questions about your information security. It's good from a business point of view because you're going to protect your business records from being linked to the market. It's good from an insurance point of view. And I think it just presents you as a much more credible business if you can demonstrate good systems and procedures into your organisation. So the statement of applicability, which I've talked about, these are a list of control objectives and measures. So your controls, so an example would be in relation to, um, so for example, internal organisation, the objective is to establish a management framework to initiate and control the implementation and operation of information security within the organisation. So if we look at information security roles and responsibilities, the control measure is all information security and responsibilities shall be defined and allocated. Uh, another measure is segregation of duties. So the control is controlling duties and areas of responsibility shall be segregated to reduce opportunities for unauthorised or unintentional modification or misuse of the organisation assets. So it's identifying the objective, what do you want to achieve, um, and then putting in place the, con the, uh, the control measures, or well, outlining the measures that you're going to use to achieve that. So in this case, segregation of duties, and then what is the control measure that you're going to put in place? And, and that's, um, there's uh, 18 of those uh, control um, objectives in the statement of applicability, and you need to have a measure for each of those that are applicable to your organisation. So use that statement as a starting point. It's not an exhaustive list, and you may have other controls that you wish to put in place. So some of the control objectives and the measures, so information policy, security policies, organisation of information, human resource security, um, so that's that's around you know access controls. So which staff have access to what? Um, crypto, cryptography um, and around the controls around that, and then physical and environmental security. So that's physical security to your business premises and environmental security. So so the environment in which you work, and whether that be external or internal, and then physical access to premises and information. So operational security, communication, so how you communicate by email and telephone and the like, you know, acquisition of uh, computer equipment, your supplier relationships are gonna be important. You know, do, you, do you work on a, you know, information is provided to suppliers and, and clients and you know, what sort of mechanisms you're gonna put in place. So, you know, if you're going to give information to a prospective client or, or a supplier that you may require them to sign a um, confidentiality agreement, for example. So incident management, so what happens if there is a breach of your security? What sort of strategies are you going to put in place to manage that? And, um, and then also the business continuity, which we talked about earlier, 
and then what strategies are going to put in place to ensure that you comply with relevant uh, legislation and also, also your um, the relevant legislation, but also your contractual compliance with your clients and your suppliers. So they, you know, you all sign agreements that have uh, requirements around record keeping and information management. So compliance is an important element of this as well. So to help you implement good controls around information security, the, the federal government has set up um, there's the Australian Cyber Security Centre, so that provides SMEs, the SMEs information about um, information security management matters. So that's the website there, and there's a lot of tools and resources and information that can help you um, put in place some relevant and, and practical policies and procedures. Oz Cyber has been set up and is funded by the government to um, support um, business and to help business in the cyber security and information management uh, requirements. So, so take advantage of that, have a look at those websites and, and take advantage of that. So that concludes my presentation for today. I hope you found it useful. It's a pretty dry subject, I'll, I'll state that. So I hope it's it exciting enough for you. But yeah, really, when you, when you think about it, you know, a successful, you know, information security management procedure, you know, it needs to be supported by you as the business owner. It needs to have commitment from all employees. You need to communicate it and consult people in the development of it. And, you know, effective processes are in place to effectively secure corporate information. You allocate resources to managing it and make sure these things actually happen. There's, it's integrated into other businesses. You continuously monitor and measure the performance of it and you document evidence of implementation. And, and I believe if you do those things, you'll have secure business information. It'll reduce your costs. It'll enable you to respond to threats. And remember, it's not just a, a cyber threat. I mean, I... The context of this presentation is threats generally to your business, so and and threats to your um, your information management, and protects confidentiality of data, so yours and your customers and your suppliers. So that's important in building your credibility as a business. People aren't going to deal with you if they're not satisfied that their personal information is protected. So it increases your resilience from cyber attack. It fulfills your compliance, helps you fulfills your compliance obligations. And it, as I have said, I believe that it's important from a business development perspective to have good information management because you're going to get questions about this in tender documents. So if you're going to apply for a tender, then you, you're going to get questions about your capacity to manage information and security of that. So if you've got some you know, practical policies and procedures and evidence of good management of information, then that's going to help you um, respond to those questions in a tender and give a good, good point score. So thanks for your participation. I'll, I'll hang on the, the line until one o'clock Perth time if you've got any questions. There are my contact details. I'm happy to have a one-on-one -on -one advisory session with you. Um, to talk about a particular aspect to do with your business. Um, so how can you do that? So there's my contact details and that's the website at the bottom here that you can go and book my services. Um, take advantage of other business station um, advisory sessions, workshops and webinars. That website at the bottom will take you to that as well. Um, they're either free or low cost. Um, and if you're interested, I have another webinar at 2 p.m. Perth time on uh, occupational health and safety and implementing uh, a management system around managing safety in the workplace. That's free of charge. Um, there's still time to register if you'd like to do that, but that, that'll also explore issues of risk management and helping you grow your business by having good systems and procedures in place. So I'll stay on the line. If you have any questions, just put them in the, the chat box. and. Uh, 
I will email you a copy of this presentation a bit later on today. So thank you for your participation and good luck in that and I'll stand by for any questions or clarifications you might have.